Because of this latest onslaught of Western denigration lies, of course, in the recent arrest and the remand of Mr. Hopol Chingono and Mr. Jacob Ngarivome, both of whom are facing serious allegations of incitement to violence and criminal abuse of social media platforms to actively encourage Zimbabweans to violently rise up against their democratically elected government. In the form of a purported coordinated display of citizens' anger over corruption, the target date being the 31st of July. I will comment upon the significance of that date in a moment. But first, let me stress, Excellencies, that in essence, and notwithstanding the corruption angle propagated by these two individuals and their Western sponsors, the call to action campaign they have been fronting actually has nothing to do with corruption. Theirs is a far more sinister agenda, orchestrated largely by external players deeply hostile to this administration and who have found in these two, and indeed others, willing puppets prepared to provoke violent confrontation to endanger lives, all in the name of undermining the credibility and legitimacy of this government, subverting the peace and stability we all enjoy. Our multiple challenges notwithstanding and providing justification for yet even further Western uh, punishment and sanctions upon our already hard-pressed people. Excellencies, let me come back to the issue of the 31st July and to stress that this was not a date chosen at random. 31st July is the second anniversary of the 2018 election. Whatever happens in the streets of Harare on that date will reflect in the global media on 1st August, the second anniversary of the tragic post-election violence itself the direct consequence of reckless incitement to insurrection by an irresponsible and uncaring opposition. 31st July is also the date on which the opposition was due to hold a Supreme Court ordered extraordinary elective Congress, a clear and deliberate maneuver by evidently desperate elements within the opposition and their Western sponsors to subvert that democratic process. 31st July and the week that follows will also see the convening of a series of virtual SADC meetings in preparation for the annual SADC summit later in the month. The likes of Chingono and Ngarivum, and more especially those pulling their strings, have always coincided their attention-seeking and anti-government activities with such international occasions. First of all, to embarrass their government, and secondly, by way of increased Western pressure and punishment, to try to achieve their objective of some form of foreign contrived facilitation for their quest for political power. We have long been aware of their machinations and the extraordinary lengths they and those behind them are prepared to go to unseat our democratically elected government. The peace-loving people of Zimbabwe and their government obviously will never allow this to succeed. In their misguided portrayal of these arrests as abductions, and with specific regard to Mr. Chimono, as the action of a vindictive government seeking retribution against a courageous journalist for daring to expose high-level corruption within Zimbabwe, our Western critics have deliberately misrepresented the facts and they have sought to deflect attention away from the subversive and highly irresponsible activities of both Shimono and Garukun. Neither of the two men was abducted. 
both were lawfully detained by members of the Zimbabwe Republic Police. Neither of the two men was arrested for exposing or focusing on corruption. None of the charges leveled against their individual relates to their focus or their reporting on corruption. The charges against both men derived from their willful, relentless, and highly irresponsible incitement to violent popular insurrection. From their cynical exhortation of the public